Okay, guys, we're going to start talking about habitats, niches, and ecosystems. I'm going to just do a quick video here for you, and hopefully uh, we'll get through everything. So where we're going to start first is talking about the different, um, what's the word I'm looking for, definitions, if this wants to change slides for me. There we go. All right, so at this point, I'm not going to go through these a lot. I'm just going to touch on a few key, oops key ones. Um, just pause the video at this point and get them in your notes. So essentially, guys, we're just looking at everything that makes up an ecosystem. So the environment in which they live in, which is everything that affects an organism throughout its life and what the organism has an effect on. We already know abiotic and biotic. And then we have kind of this hierarchy of definitions. So species being the lowest and ecosystem being the biggest. So species, and it's very important you know this definition, are animals that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. So again, a donkey and a horse can mate and they can have a mule, it's called, but that mule is actually not fertile. So it is not uh, going to reproduce. So we do not have the same species there. Then as you follow up into the notes with these definitions, it just gets bigger. So then a population is a group of the same species in the same place and time. Community is a couple populations together. An ecosystem is all the communities together and abiotic factors. Then the limiting factors are the abiotic and biotic components that kind of interact, that stop populations from getting out of control. So again, pause, get these in your notes, and then move forward. So habitats and niches. Let's talk about habitats and niches. They get mixed in together quite often because niches do talk about habitats. But the habitat is actually the physical area in which a species lives. Okay, It's very dependent upon the environmental conditions that they can live in. So where can they survive the best? For example, you wouldn't take a whale and throw it in the middle of the desert. It would die. Okay, Where is its conditions for best survival is its habitat. Its niche, on the other hand, is the role it plays. So it's its job in the actual food chain. What does it eat? What does it contribute? And it includes all the biotic factors it needs for survival, as well as it is where it lives. It is its habitat. So we will watch this video on Monday. Uh, sorry, not Monday, Wednesday when I'm back. So just keep rolling through here. All right, so get these in your notes. These are what we were talking about today, the difference between producers and consumers. Producers produce their own energy using the sun's energy, and consumers eat things to get energy, okay? And we're going to see all the different types of consumers here in a second. But just remember, they are considered two completely separate groupings because one makes their energy and one gets their energy from someone else. So if we're looking at all the types of consumers you can have, you can have herbivores and carnivores, as well as omnivores, which we do talk about. Herbivores eat plants, carnivores eat animals. When we look at carnivores specifically, it actually gets broken into another array. We have what we would call primary, secondary, sorry, prime, secondary and tertiary consumers. Essentially, they are animals that eat other animals. Okay. Herbivores are what we would call our primary consumers because they are the first group that eats and they're only eating plants. So they're the primary eaters. Omnivores are just animals that can eat either or. And then every ecosystem has decomposers that take the matter, put it back into the soil to give soil nutrients. So we are going to draw this into our notes. This is essentially the role of a food chain. So draw and describe the relationship between producers and all kinds of consumers. Here it is. A producer produces the energy which is eaten by the herbivore. The herbivore is eaten by the carnivore and the carnivore is eaten by another carnivore. As we move up the food chain, we are transferring energy from one group to another. And that is how energy flows through our ecosystems. So once all that energy is flowed and each of these things die, a decomposer acts on every single one of these to return it back to the earth. So an ecosystem, we already said an ecosystem is everything that is inside of the area you're looking at that is an organism's effect and that have an effect on the ecosystem. So again, there's some examples there. It's abiotic and biotic factors and we cycle all these lovely different nutrients and matter all through and we're gonna talk about those in another chapter. So we're zooming through because I really wanna talk about trophic levels. So trophic levels are looking at an actual um, food chain and talking about the relationship of where they are in the food chain in relative to their eating order. So trophic means food and trophic level means feeding level. So if you look at the sun, that's our first level, but our first trophic level would be considered our primary producers right here because they are the first level that is uh, 
making food essentially they're making it from the sun so they're eating the sun's energy we'll say okay so as we go up the food chain this would be trophic level one trophic level two trophic level three four five and so forth so um bacteria are kind of not included in this in the sense that they are decomposers and they kind of fall in everywhere so a food chain we now know it models a linear pathway in which food is transferred from the primary consumer all the way that all the way up or producer all the way up and each one of these is a trophic level so in your notes it asks you to draw a diagram of a tertiary uh, sorry a terrestrial food chain can you please make sure you get this into your notes and put it in there with all the labeled parts all right and we're going to discuss this in class but for now, just get them in your notes and try and make sense of what it's saying. So pause it here, right in your notes. The other one I want you to get into your notes is a ma marine uh, food chain. And the reason is, is because they're kind of unique. And we'll talk about the uniqueness of a marine food chain when we talk about energy pyramids and number of pyramids and biomass pyramids. So to have an example, please put this in the section that says draw a marine food chain below. So we're eventually going to make it to food webs. We're going to model food webs. We're going to talk about the transfer of energy throughout. And as we build our project, I will continue talking about it. But essentially, it takes food chains and shows all the connections and all the different areas that uh, animals eat each other or where they're eating. And so it makes this web-like structure. So it differs from a food chain because it's made up of food chains. Okay, And it connects them all together. Right? So if you take a look at all the different food chains we have here, a food web connects them and shows the energy transfer through. So the last thing I want to talk about today is predator-prey relationships and how they actually are influenced. So predator-prey relationships are actually biotic factors. They're actually biotic limiting factors. It, they are dependent upon each other in the sense of how many how big the population can get so you can see that the prey really dictates what happens to the predator so as the prey's number increases you will see the predator's number afterwards increase to in response to the population size so you'll see the fluctuations occur very closely to each other because they're very dependent upon each other so what we're going to do is we are going to be answering these questions in class based on an assignment you're going to be doing. I just want to quickly speak to them so that you have an idea of what is happening in class. So each of these will be answered via a sheet I'm going to post and I will give you the data already plotted. You do not have to dot the plot. You don't have to plot the data. I can't speak obviously. What's going to happen here is when it talks about growth curves that are said to fluctuate, Okay, fluctuations just means the highs and lows and fluctuating cycle, if we go back quickly, a fluctuating cycle would mean from a rise to a fall. Okay, that's a fluctuating cycle. So anywhere it goes from a rot where it's rising up and then falling again would be one cycle. So just when you do that, just remember that as you're answering these questions as you go along, uh, we will speak to these questions uh, when I get back on Wednesday. So they 100% this entire assignment needs to be done before I get back. Again, I will post all these questions in the Google Classroom. You don't have to stress about it. So uh, the last thing I would like to quickly talk to you about is when we have competition. Okay, so predator-prey relationships are relationships that work on uh, back and forth method. Pre competition is really about competing within your species or outside your species for the same food sources, okay? So intraspecific species is when members of the same species compete and interspecific is when members of the species compete from different species. So the best way to remember this is if you've ever seen the movie Space Jam, okay? It sounds silly, but I like to remember it as this, when you are competing within the same species. So when the Looney Tunes are playing basketball against each other, okay, that is intraspecific competition. When the Monstars come along and they want to compete and play basketball against the Looney Tunes, that is interspecific competition, okay? Two separate different species competing for one goal. So again, another way you could look at it is use the words international, meaning across the globe or intramurals when you play dodgeball against each other in gym class.
All right. So have your notes filled out and then go and finish the predator prey assignment. And that is all for this video. I hope you guys have a good time and I'll see you on Wednesday.